Hey guys, welcome to Team Pandora. This is Emi Chicky. It seems like the only way to play a PlayStation 1 is on one of these big TVs back from the 90s. Or is it? Well, we got a package from Bitfunks. They saw us faffing around with their adapters, so they decided to send us some stuff for review. Today, we have three Bitfunks HDMI adapters for the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. In this video, we're going to find out the differences between each item. They're all sold by Bitfunks, but each is slightly different. There's a brief explanation on the back, which states one is only for PlayStation 2 and the other is for both systems. It can't be that simple, can it? So first up is this one for the PlayStation Half. Well, you know, both PlayStations. Inside the pretty nice looking box, we have a nice looking manual and a whole three pages of information. Apparently this is the plug and play solution and it works for monitors, projectors and TVs for PlayStation 1 and 2s. That's probably why it says it supports from 240p all the way to 576p's. It also states to use Prebebre for PlayStation 2. This should give us a finer image than RGB. The manual is in German, French, Italian, Spanish, and also in Nihongo. The HDMI adapter is tightly stuck in the box. This ain't going anywhere. And it looks really nice. And under this plastic, we get a USB power cable and a HDMI cable. It looks pretty thick. Like your mom. The adapter itself seems to be made of aluminium. And we have a switch here for RGB to Yibber River. And also the HDMI port. Here's a junk PlayStation 1. And this is how you'd hook it up. So you'd stick it in the PlayStation. HDMI cable in. And then for the power, you'd need this cable hooked up to anything that can give you some USB power. For the PlayStation 2, it's exactly the same thing. Let's give it a test on the piece of junk. Will it work? We can see here that the screen is somewhat stretched and the colors are slightly faded. I'm glad to see that there is no noticeable latency. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Here's a bit of Tekken 2. This intro, epic. The controls are very tight, but the colors are slightly faded and the screen is stretched. Do you remember this game? Buster Groove. What a classic. And some Final Fantasy VII. International. It's actually worth mentioning right now that the dongle itself is actually getting rather hot. So moving on to the PlayStation 2, it recommends we change this to Yubber. And we'll try that with a PlayStation 1 game first. Let's leave it to Lammy. Seems to be the same deal. Very similar to what we have with the PlayStation 1. Let's try some PlayStation 2 games. This one's R Racing Evolution. Like the PlayStation 1, there is a lack of vibrance in the colors, and the display itself is kind of blurry.
Beautiful. Next up, Tekken Tag Tournament. Round one, fight. What is cool to see is that both 50 and 60 Hz work through this HDMI adapter. On my actual monitor, this looked great, but my Elgato video capture device did not like picking up 50 Hz. Here's the same thing in NTSC 60 Hz mode. Time for the second box. The manual is very similar, with the absence of 240p and 288p. It doesn't mention anything about the video output, so it could be passing through an interlaced image. Same as before, we got English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and Japanese. And then at the very back, we have pages or notes. Interesting. This unit packing is very similar to the first. The adapter is tightly fit into this molded plastic, and underneath that we have the HDMI and the USB to power cable. This is more than likely aluminium casing, around one centimeter shorter than the last one. We still have the RGB to yubbub, and outside that it looks very similar. It goes into your PlayStation 2 like so. HDMI in here, and then the other cable for the power. There's already a night and day difference in the PlayStation 2 menu. We can already see that when using this adapter, we have far more color than the first. It is also much more brighter. There is less blur here too. Yeah, this is far better. Here's Tekken Tag. As I mentioned before, there is no clear output resolution of this adapter. It is more of a pass-through unit, so my Elgato found it kind of difficult to capture the video. The video output itself on the monitor looks rather decent without any interlacing artifacts. Yeah, this is way better. And the same again, Gradius 5 works both in PAL and NTSC. As the Elgato did not know what it was doing, the monitor displayed in a decent aspect ratio, while the Elgato stretched it wide out. To the third of the three Amigos. This one is actually rather cheap. It's around $7 on AliExpress. And the big difference here is no box. It's also made of plastic and uses a mini USB for the power. It plugs in flush to the PlayStation 2, and next to the HDMI port, there's an audio jack too. Plugging this in cannot be simpler. Just insert it like so. HDMI. And then the power. This will go into a USB power adapter. And there we have it. Another decent image. At first glance, I can't exactly see a difference between this and the one we just had. Playing through a few games, it does seem very, very similar. So I guess the only thing we can do is put them head to head. We'll go through each of the adapters while watching the intro to Final Fantasy X. The first adapter is the weakest, showing faded colors and visible interlacing. The second improves on this substantially. Check the brighter colors and the darker blacks. The third adapter is extremely similar to the second. There is slightly less contrast, so the image looks more natural. Unfortunately, none of these adapters can adjust aspect ratio. If you have a TV with a 4-3 button, you will be able to fix this. But if you don't have that feature on your TV, or you only use monitors, then you're screwed. 
There is also one more difference between both PlayStation 2 adapters. If we listen closely, the third adapter has some background hiss. The second one in comparison is a lot more silent. This might be due to it being shielded by the aluminium case. So out of these three, which one should you get? Well, this is the only option for PlayStation 1 games, and it also works in your PlayStation 2. As this is the only one that gets rather hot, and the images distort somewhat, we choose one of the others for PS2. Out of these two, it's anyone's game. Would you rather have better video, or save money with an audio jack? Either way, all of these units stretch the screen. As 16.9 monitors are the norm, we'd love to see a little button to switch through the aspect ratio modes. Until then, we'll need an OSSC. Here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We appreciate all of the support you've given us, and keeps us motivated to carry on with this Pandora project. Also thanks goes to all of those that are liking our videos and sharing them too. Shouts and greets to all those on the Discord, and thank you Bitfunks for sending these adapters. I'll catch you on the next one guys. Ta-ra! Are you still here? Bang that like and subscribe button. Much like how I bang your mum every Friday night. In front of that large mirror. Till next time.